Hi everyone, welcome to JD Gardens. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Please support the channel by planting that subscribe button. And if you're already a viewer, welcome back. Well, we got a real exciting episode for you today. If you're planning on putting a new garden in your property, but the area that you want to work in is uh, maybe sloped or on a hill or just plain unleveled, then stick around and we'll show you how we handle that. So we're here in Garden North, or what will be the expansion of Garden North. Over here is the greenhouse, and this area is going to be a brand new garden. It's going to have uh, about five planter beds, 16 feet long, three feet wide, with uh, 30 inch aisles. And uh, on the bottom, it's going to have crushed stone for walkways, watering system, the works. You know, it's amazing to think of what this area looked like just a few years ago. Take a look at this picture. Now I know what you're thinking, That's a, that was a really nice jungle gym and playground setup. But you know, my son's all grown up now and he hasn't touched it in years, so it was time to, to move on. So, But rest assured, we actually found a good home for the jungle gym. We actually uh, gave it to some neighbors of ours. Uh, so what we did is we actually picked it up, put it on dollies, and rolled it down the street. Take a look at this crazy video. That was a pretty crazy video, huh? Now I know what you're thinking. Damn, why didn't you just take it apart and like drive it over or walk it over your neighbor's house? It wasn't too far away. But, you know, what would be the fun in that? So, so it's hard to tell now, but this area of our property actually slopes a lot. It slopes in two different directions. It slopes down this way, uh, pretty steep, down towards the greenhouse. And it also slopes this way towards uh, our property line where the fence is. Now, um, it's always hard to build on here. Even years ago when I built that jungle gym for my son, um, what I had to do is make a big giant uh, like a sandbox. What I did is I had some railroad ties and I built a big uh, playground right here and I filled this whole area up with dirt. Picture this area about, about 18 to two feet high. And that was to get a nice level surface. But now that we want to make it into a garden, uh, what we're, and we're going to have a 16 foot planter beds here, it just wasn't long enough. So what we figure we had to do is uh, dig it all out and make what's called a sunken garden. Now for those who don't know, a sunken garden is any formal garden in some kind of uh, depression in the ground. In our case, it's going to be a man-made one because we dug this all out. Now the reason we're going through all this work is because we really wanted to have as level of a garden as possible. If, if I built, built the planter beds on the ground the way it was, the planter beds would lean this way and some of them lean that way and the tops wouldn't line up. And as a designer, that would just drive me absolutely crazy. So we decided to put a little sweat equity into it and uh, go with the sunken garden. 
And let me tell you, it's actually a lot of work, depending on uh, how your property is. For us, like I said, uh, the highest point that we have is over there in the foreground, and that's about uh, 18 inches to, to about two feet to where the lowest point is. Now, the reason we had to actually, and not to mention all the dirt that I had added to level this off. Now, the reason that we actually have to dig this all out is because when the rain comes, we wanna make sure that the water actually pitches away from the garden and drains down behind the greenhouse. Uh, that's the theory anyway. So let's see how that turns out. Now, um, we've been actually spending the better part of, uh, of uh, almost two months digging this area out. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, that, Dan, you should have you just rented a backhoe, <laughs> save your back and save time. And you know what? You're probably right. Uh, truth be told is that uh, I've never used one of those little back holes uh, uh, before and they're about uh, $300 to rent over at Home Depot and uh, a day and I said you know I, I was afraid that it might be too much of a learning curve for me so uh, I decided to pull out the tiller and my son and we just uh, went to town on it and um, in retrospect we probably should have uh, rented the uh, backhoe and taken a chance but uh, you know what it was a hell of a workout and uh, and it's uh, there is believe it or not there's something satisfying in knowing that you did this all yourself so once you have your area all dug out you're probably going to want to build some kind of retaining wall now a retaining wall is meant to hold back the soil so it doesn't fall into the area that you're going to work in uh, due to uh, weather rain and everything so now our area is so shaly like i talked about i probably really don't even need this but i did want it to look nice in here so i uh and i had all those railroad ties from my uh from the jungle gym, so I decided to uh, recycle them, or uh, reuse them in this case. So, uh, these are uh, uh, railroad ties, they're about uh, eight inches high, so it goes out to about 24 inches, like I said before. And um, uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of people like to use brick too, they make uh, bricks that are, are uh, can be staggered to hold back any kind of dirt. Um, like I said, we had these, so we decided to use them. So. Um, I've already actually built this area out. There's one other section. Uh, why don't I show you how we did it? So building a retain, uh, retainer wall really isn't that difficult. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Like I said, um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you a real simple method uh, using railroad ties. Now I'm not going uh, too high with this. Uh, actually in this section, uh, that section I had three. This one I'm going only two. It's about 16 inches high. And the, real, the main thing about a uh, retaining wall is that you want to make sure your base or foundation is nice and level. You want to get it as flat as possible. So when you're building it up, if you can see this, you want to make sure you level it up as much as possible. Keep adding dirt. Let me just get this in spot because I actually already had this level. Okay. You want to get a level in here and make sure as flat as possible. And there's no real science to this. I think it's nice and level, <laughs> dead on center. You just wanna get some loose dirt, put it in there, get some kind of mallet, and just keep flattening the area down. If it's too low on one area, just lift it up, add some dirt underneath there, get it flat down, tamp it down as much as possible, and then just uh, keep adding dirt to fill in any pockets. Now, I already have this all laid out, leveled out, so we're fine. I'm leveled out over there, perfect. So what I'm gonna wanna do is grab another row, or let me grab this timber over here. Make it a two-person job, if you have help. <laughs> okay, these aren't light, if you're gonna use the timbers. So, I've already done some of this. I just want laying out for you. So, I'm actually ending it right here. So, I have another scrap piece. What I like to do at the end, and I just put a 45 uh, degree uh, cut on it just so that it's, uh, you know, clean there. Okay, so it's all lined up. Now, the next step is to 
secure, <coughs> excuse me, to secure the timbers. And in that case, for that, I like to use a rebar. So what you do is uh, you get some rebar. I'm reusing everything old, so these are uh, pieces that I was using for the jungle gym, so I'm gonna reuse it now. Uh, we'll set up. I've already drilled some of the holes, but just to give you show, show you, you wanna get a nice strong drill uh, with a nice long bit. And let me just see if I have it lined up. Yep. Okay. And you drill a hole right to the next one all the way down. This was long enough that it took me all the way down. Now what I like to do is I like to add a piece of rebar in there just to keep the hole, <laughs> keep it nice and straight. Now what I'll do is I'll come over, oops, excuse me, come over to this side and I'll make sure my holes line up as well. Okay, so they line up perfect. So let me grab another rebar. Okay, so now I know that the holes line up. I'm just gonna check my level again, and it's perfect. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this side. So, Get a nice long rebar, and uh, how long is, <laughs> depending on how much you want to hammer it into the ground, this is the difficult part. So I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to set the rebar. I'm going to start off with my heavy mallet. And depending on how long you want to go at it but the best thing is to grab the big sledgehammer and slowly you want to stand on it to make sure it doesn't move Whoop. it actually starts getting easier Whew. I'd stay in like I'd swing the hammer over my head but I get out of camera range. So let me do it. It's getting much easier. Probably hit a rock or a piece of shell underneath. That was stopping. Now it's actually going now. Pretty easy as you can see. And done. All right, do that a few hundred times. No, just kidding. Once you got that nailed on both sides, or rebarred on both sides, you'll probably want to do in the middle, wherever you think it's going to, uh, uh, it needs a little more support. With that going in the ground, I'd say about 18 inches to two feet, this wall is not going to go anywhere. Now, when digging out a, um, a retaining wall, you always wind up with some gaps in the back because you're never going to dig away perfectly smooth. Uh, so you're going to want to backfill this area. Now, uh, what I do is I bring the camera down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, when you build out your wall and you start digging away the dirt, you're going to have a lot of jagged areas and it's not going to be uh, perfectly flush. So you're actually going to want to fill in this area because it would look kind of unsightly and you want to be able to support this as well. So uh, what you can do is just take a bunch of loose dirt and kind of fill it in there. But just uh, you really want to kind of shove it in there. Maybe grab a rebar and uh, push in the dirt uh, because you're going to end up with a lot of air pockets. But I have come up with a way over the years to, uh, when I've, I've done a bunch of retaining walls like this to, uh, to fill in the dirt. Uh, to fill in the dirt behind there really easy and it can actually bring you back to your childhood So why don't we go over to the other side and I'll show you All right, so we're back here at the original part of the wall and as you can see There's a large gap here when I was uh, measuring out the space for uh, from the shed 
to where I wanted to start the retaining wall. I think I, I dug away a little too much, uh, but that's okay. So you see there's a couple of gaps there and kind of uh, uneven. Uh, some of it are like three inches there, or like six inches here. So the way I found to fill this in and to get it really nice and tight in there, that instead of just using loose soil in there, what I like to do is uh, 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 make mud pies. And by that is you wanna make sure you have nice clean soil and you wanna obviously uh, make a bunch of mud if you have a big trough. And what you wanna do is uh, you want it actually nice and soupy. And the reason is you're gonna pour it in there and what it's gonna do, it's gonna fill in all the little cavities in there. If you use regular soil, it's just gonna, there's gonna be areas missed and then eventually when it rains, it's gonna keep, it'll start pushing it down eventually, but then you'll have to add more soil down the road. This way, um, if you make it nice and soupy, you just fill it in, let it dry. It'll take you one or two days. If you can see, we've already, uh, we started this yesterday and we're up about, um, about 20 inches there and it's all been drying so it slopes down here like i said the property slopes here so we're gonna fill it in get it nice and level with the ground and uh just makes life a lot easier uh, it makes a little bit of a mess but uh if you're careful uh you'll be all right so what i'll do here is since I'm, I'm gonna have to make a new batch yeah there you go and just pour it in once i pour it in this will all dry tomorrow. It's gonna be pretty hot. So uh, by the time I get home from work, it'll be nice dry and there'll be a nice base to start on like I was over there. And I should be able to finish the rest of this off uh, tomorrow. All right, now that we have the area all dug out and our retainer walls are up, before we can put the landscape fabric and the planter beds and the crushed stone, we have to try to get the surface as smooth as possible so like I said so when it rains the water will actually uh, be diverted down this way and back behind the greenhouse and uh, like I said uh, my area is extremely shaly so uh, when we've been digging for the last few weeks uh, using the tiller and even with a pickaxe we've been leaving a lot of high and low areas uh, and a lot of pop marks and and uh, and craters and divots so what we're gonna what we have to do is like i said get it nice and smoothed out so what we've been doing with the soil that as we've been digging it up as you see over here we've been actually sifting it out now as you can see there's some uh, quite big pieces here so that if you tried to use this to smooth an area out those rocks would just be a nightmare so uh, i just pulled out my simple slant sifter and uh, painstakingly <laughs> went through all this soil and I got a couple of drums over there full of more of it but uh, look at it you get nice uh, soil here from this shaley stuff and uh, it just uh, gonna make life a lot either and I didn't have to go and have uh, buy more soil and have it dumped so uh, so we can get this leveled out so uh, we're very big on uh, DIY here like I've said in the past but sometimes it pays to get a professional who really knows what he's doing so um, I think I'm gonna have my landscape guy come here he's a master at leveling things out he's gonna come here make it nice and smooth and perfectly pitched down this way and down that way so we don't have any problem with the rains because I don't want to go through all this trouble and have big pockets of water uh, this guy's great, so uh, we're gonna have him come over and uh, level out and uh, we'll show you how he does that.
So didn't they do a great job? I mean, look at this area. Look how nice and level it is. I can see it from here, the pitch is perfect. It's headed down this way and then also headed this way. So uh, we're not gonna have any problems with rainwater uh, building up. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. So uh, another step that you can take before you start putting your landscape uh, paper and the uh, crushed stones or your garden bed is to try to compact the soil as much as possible. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Uh, you can uh, use a tamper and knock down each area. That probably would take uh, a long time. They do make uh, what's called a, a uh, sod roller. And what this is, is a, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's, <laughs> it's a big rolling pin and it's uh, plastic with a metal frame. And what you do is you fill it up with water. It's probably like 50, uh, 50 or maybe 100 pounds of water, I'm not sure. Um, and what it does, it, uh, it's so heavy, as you roll over it, kind of like when you're kneading dough, it flattens it out, makes it nice and smooth. So you can see, I've been going through this, it's almost like a mirror surface. I, couldn't be happier and it's, a, it's an important step to take uh, it's gonna uh, if the soil is too loose on the top as you walk around you're gonna be leaving footprints and everything so and you'll have some divots so you just keep rolling this out and it's just gonna like I said push everything down so now when I put my uh, uh, my paper uh, my um, uh, landscape uh, fabric rather excuse me it's gonna be have a nice smooth surface to go on and then I can add my uh, my uh, planter beds and uh, and the crushed stone so um, this is a it's a great tool to have if you do a lot of gardening you do a lot of leveling in your era like I said I've had it for about 10 years and I just love it and uh, it's great it's just uh, it, it uh, helps me out in any area anytime uh, it, when I'm uh, leveling a surface out for a new garden for the greenhouse for whatever so we'll leave some links to it uh, below if you're interested in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue going around a few more times this is, a, this is a step that you can't do too many times. The harder you get your surface, the better that the rainwater is gonna uh, divert away and not sink as much into the ground. So I'm gonna continue on. So once you have your area nice and smooth and as packed down as you want it, time to add the landscape fabric. And uh, this is pretty straightforward. Um, if you can see, we're working with a six foot roll here and uh, we kind of sprung in for the heavier duty stuff because we're gonna be having a crushed stone on the top. So as you can see, I already started the first two rows and it's, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It's, you wanna overlap it maybe a foot with the uh, fabric before it, maybe a little less, uh, depending on how much you have. Uh, let me, once I line it up, All right, once you have it, you might want to start unrolling it. And if you're not familiar with uh, landscape fabric, well, like I said, this is the acts as a weed barrier and it'll help with uh, soil erosion as well. Uh, we're, this is a garden, so we're obviously uh, using it as a wheel, uh, weed barrier. Okay, so, so then what you want to do is take uh, garden staples and they come in different sizes uh, believe it or not this one's actually given us a problem because our area is so shaly they're too long so I keep having to find different spots but once I get the a course laid out I just want to so the wind doesn't grab it just want to staple the fabric see and I hit some stones so that's a problem with working on shaly soil you just want to move it around a little bit so you can find the right spot and I think I might have gotten it now no, no, it's bending, but it's enough to hold it down. That's the problem with shaley soil. So we're gonna go by and add a, a bunch of staples, but I just wanna get this set. So I'm gonna do the two corners. And did I get lucky here? I did, look at that, lucky me. All right, whoop. Actually, I'll need that. So got my razor, just gonna Roll the fabric down and really just covering everything up, making sure you keep the overlap with the, uh, the course before. <sighs> no weeds are gonna <laughs> get through this. So 
I'm gonna get it all the way to the edge here. I'm just gonna use uh, this two by four as a straight edge. So when I cut my fabric, make sure you have a nice sharp razor or scissor. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you can see the wind's picking up. So you're gonna wanna get your uh, staples in as soon as possible. That's the, all right. So once I know this is in a good spot, it's gonna set a staple quickly for the wind takes it. My luck, I'm going to hit rocks here. <laughs> okay. So, make sure I'm overlapped. I think I'm a little too far over there. Try not to do this when it's too windy. Okay. There, should hold them please. And if you have someone that can help you, that would be good too. All right. Like I said, you might have an easier time putting these staples in the ground if your ground isn't as shaly as mine. But there you go. So you wanna clean up the edges. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add staples about every two feet on the seams and then we're gonna put them uh, mixed around in the center so that the wind doesn't uh, blow on it too much before we get the uh, stones in there. So take a look on the box of staples that it'll usually tell you or on the landscape product tell you how much, how many staples to, to add in, uh, in the area. So I'm gonna continue on this before the rain uh, picks up and uh, and then uh, uh, then we'll start on the planter beds. All right, so as you can see, all the landscape fabric is in, and thank God we were able to get done in the nick of time yesterday because it downpoured, and I mean torrential. It came out of nowhere. And I think I finished the last part about 20 minutes before it started to rain. But it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because though everything out there is totally soaked, look in here. There's no standing water, there's no puddles. We got the pitch perfect, which is great because all the water, we were watching it, all the water collected and started running down right behind the greenhouse, exactly what we planned. So uh, it was worth all the work that we put into it and I think this garden is gonna be safe for the future. So I think what we're gonna do, uh, what we have, still have to do, we have to get the planter beds in here, set them in place. We have to put all the crushed stones in the walkways and then fill the planter beds and then get ready for planting. But getting ahead of myself, let's get the planter beds in here first. Okay, I think that just about uh, does it. I still have a little more work to do on the edge here. Um, I gotta put some kind of edging to hold the rocks in, uh, but um, I'm still trying to decide whether I'm gonna tackle <laughs> replacing the fence, this, uh, this side of the property, the fence this year. 
Uh, so um, I'm not gonna just uh, finish that yet, but as you, uh, as you can see, uh, we got the uh, uh, walkways filled with stone and we got our planter beds all filled with, uh, with uh, soil. Uh, and actually, we actually, um, uh, most of the soil that we have in here is uh, the compost that we make over our winter pile. I think we made like uh, close to eight yards and uh, we put that in first and then we add in uh, some uh, other, uh, top it off with some other soil we get from a local nursery. And uh, it looks pretty good. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, I know you can, as you can see, uh, Jackie wasted no time uh, planting everything, uh, starting to plant. Uh, I, when it comes to planting season, I'll tell you, she's a uh, machine. Uh, we, we, as we were finishing each planter bed, she was right behind us on our tail, uh, filling them up and uh, it's coming out great. Uh, we have our couple of planter beds here with some extra cannas. She's got a ton of onions, uh, awesome, growing there. Uh, I think some asparagus and some more stuff. All our herbs. I believe uh, later today she's gonna be planting potatoes and a um, bunch of other stuff <laughs> over here. So a lot of, uh, a lot of space for planting uh, and it, uh, it's, it's, it's looking great. Uh, so uh, what I was saying about the walkway, we, we decided to use a, uh, a stone. It's, I believe this is called a Delaware stone. It has a quarter inch, uh, it's a smaller. It has a bunch of different colors in it. It has some, uh, it's hard to see from the camera, but it has some grays and some blues and some reds. And we wanted to try something, uh, a few more colors other than just one uniform color. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to, uh, there are a lot of options for walkways. Uh, obviously, if you had to, wanted to spend the money, you could do uh, pavers, which would look uh, awesome <laughs> if you had the money for that <laughs> or you can find something a little more economical and uh, do like a uh, mulch and um, uh, mulch is uh, very practical you see a lot of people doing it um, our experience with mulch is that uh, eventually weeds start growing in it and uh, we put a lot of time and effort in this we try to do everything we can to avoid weed uh, by um, you know putting in the heavier weed barrier and uh, with these stones so Hopefully the stones uh, will deter any weeds from growing and, um, uh, and, and it really wasn't too bad, I believe. Uh, uh, so we have about 900 square feet here in all the walkways uh, without the planter beds. And I think uh, it, for about two inches worth to fill it all in, uh, two inches high to fill it all in, it was about three tons that we had to have dropped uh, in our yard. And, um, uh, it was a little under $300, which, you know, it's not so bad. Obviously more expensive than mulch, no doubt, no doubt. But um, uh, three in, a little under $300, and you figure about 60 of that or so was for delivery. So not too bad. And, and uh, I, I will tell you, I mean, it looks great. <laughs> and it's really comfortable to walk on. I know it sounds silly, but it kind of forms to your shoe. And it's really nice. And, uh, and obviously when the winds pick up or rain comes, it's not going to wash this away. The wind's not going to blow the stones away as opposed to mulch. Uh, that could happen. So it's a really nice alternative. And um, it's, um, uh, it, uh, I think it's going to last us for years to come. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this gives you the motivation to start a garden of your own. And remember, there's no place in your property that you can't uh, put a garden in. You just might have to put a little sweat equity into it and get it right like what we did. Uh, but at the end, it is totally worth it. So keep an eye out for some uh, new videos that we're going to be doing this summer, uh, uh, this season rather. We're uh, going to be adding in water systems. We're going to be adding in trellises to grow our uh, uh, string beans and uh, we're going to be putting in a, a cage system uh, that's easily removable to, to keep the critters out and if that fails we're actually going to put a, <laughs> an uh, electric wire uh, to keep them out as well but let's hope we don't have to go that way so if you have any questions or comments uh, please leave them below we'd love to hear from you and be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring that bell and uh, I want to give a uh, special shout out and a thank you uh, to my son who has been with me through every part of this project and I, I know I didn't give you uh, much choice monk but uh, I know those uh, when we started back in uh, early March and uh, in the cold weather and through those hot days and 
uh, weekends and after school. And uh, <laughs> I know for a few weeks we went by and when we were digging away, it seemed like we weren't getting anywhere. It didn't seem like it was, and I remember us talking about it. And uh, it, it, it was a lot of work, uh, no doubt a few hundred wheelbarrow loads later and uh, look what we were able to create. And uh, uh, Jackie and I uh, truly appreciate everything you did. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's a lot of work, uh, but it was also a lot of, a lot of fun spending time with you and uh, doing this. As, as much as you might not have enjoyed it, uh, I sure did. So I hope you all have a happy and healthy and uh, a bountiful growing season. I, I know we're going to. And so until next time, remember, yes, we can. Uh,